Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. As-salatu wa salamu ala Sayyidina al-Mursaleen wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Dear brothers and sisters, today I'd like to talk to you about Ramadan and mental health, um, looking particularly at loneliness, which seems to be an ongoing pandemic in this 21st century, um, which has been exacerbated by COVID-19 and looking at strategies um, to help us reduce this feeling of loneliness and the genuine uh, loneliness within our community. Inshallah. So um, Ramadan has always been a very sociable time. It's amazing that so much of our religion is very much communal, whether it's congregational prayer, whether it's Hajj and Umrah, um, you know, whether it's giving charity. It's not a religion meant for monks and uh, people of absolute isolation. It is very much that we are interconnected as human beings, interconnected as one brotherhood um, that feels the pain if, if one limb is hurting, the rest of us hurts. And so when we're not able to perform our worship, uh, particularly the month of Ramadan in the way that we are used to, uh, with that massive community spirit, we, we feel that pain, we feel that absence. Um, so looking at mental health, um, you know, when we're not able to get this social connection, it has an impact, an adverse impact on our mental health and our well-being. Um, and that has an indirect consequence on the quality of our worship as well. On this slide, I've just listed some of the factors that might be impacting us um, in the month of Ramadan in terms of our mental health. So the most basic one is a uh, change in, in pattern, really. So that's our sleep. Um, poor quality sleep or less sleep has a direct impact on the quality of our mood, the quality of our relationships, our emotional regulation, our ability to control our temper. Um, and there has been a, a short clip that I've produced already on how to optimize the quality of um, our sleep during Ramadan. So inshallah, if you can know that it's not about sleeping a lot, it's about sleeping effectively, sleeping smart, as one would say. Um, also, many of us don't undertake as much physical activity, and um, physical activity is associated with superior mental and physical well-being. So it's important to maintain some form of exercise, whether that's a simple walk, whether that is um, you know, something that you're used to doing before Ramadan, provided it's not high impact or dehydrating and that it's done at the right time of day. So ideally the after Fajr or a, or a stroll after Maghrib if you are going to head to the mosque with Darawi. Uh, a change of diet, so diet has a definite impact on our mental health. Unfortunately, many of us eat more fried foods, the pagoras, the samosas, the, um, the koftas, the pastries, many things come out in Ramadan that we don't eat all year round. So we give our gut a real workout um, when we break the fast. And uh, associated with that, a, a sugary food, we feel that we must have these sweets and treats. In fact, our diet should be a lot simpler. Um, and while we're doing this for Las Pantala, the additional benefit is if we do give our, give our gut a proper and, and real rest. Fried foods, sugary foods, all these things cause inflammation, including inflammation in the brain, which can lead to brain fog, increased tiredness, mood swings. Um, mental health illness is something that we've become a lot more aware of over the recent years. Um, and, you know, a significant proportion of the population, at least 10 percent, suffered with depression at some point in their lives. Um, but alongside we see this, we see anxiety, eating disorders, many, many conditions. Now, most people with mild uh, to moderate mental health conditions are able to fast. They may be taking a once daily antidepressant, um, which should be fine to continue with or undertaking um, sleep uh, talking therapies. However, there are certain conditions where it may not be safe to fast. For example, if you have a significant eating, eating disorder such as anorexia, um, or where you may have uh, you know, bipolar or other conditions where you're acutely mentally unwell and you're not able to manage without your medication or the impact of missing the medication or changing the routine or pattern may cause a deterioration in your health and well-being. 
So these cases should be discussed um, on a one-to-one -one basis with your own GP and perhaps with a person knowledge. The additional factor is COVID-19. We're now starting to see some of the aftermath of long COVID, so COVID, uh, coronavirus illness, where symptoms go on beyond the four weeks and post-COVID syndrome where they go on beyond 12 weeks. And associated with that is a definite uh, recognised increase in um, things like depression, anxiety and sleep disturbance, which may also be impacting mental health. Of course, some of us may have experienced adversity last year, um, you know, with loss of family members or loved ones, and that may also carry over a negative impact into this Ramadan with feelings of fear and trauma. Um, multitasking is never good for us at the best of time. Um, I'm just as guilty as everybody else, unfortunately, um, but it, it doesn't do us any favours in terms of our mental health. You'll be much more productive just doing one thing at a time in a mindful fashion. Then we have workplace challenges. Is it hard for you to get time, you know, off to break your fast? For example, if you work on a shift pattern, um, are you working nights? Is your workplace understanding around the factors, uh, around, you know, facilitating your worship, around facilitating fasting and prayers, etc. going on, you know, those things can be just an added ongoing background um, stressor, really, unless you have a frank discussion or you have understanding work colleagues. We then have communal activities such as salah, uh, tarawih, iftar, etc., um, which have all been compromised by social distancing that is necessary at this time. Um, loneliness, which is an ongoing uh, epidemic or pandemic you want to call it it's definitely an epidemic in this country um, and London has been rated as one of the loneliest countries in the world despite it being absolutely wonderful in many other ways um, so recognizing what that looks like what the factors are that drive it um, and how we can decrease it particularly at this time where we're not engaging in as many communal activities and the impact of lockdown what is loneliness is loneliness being alone? Is it that you have no friends or family? Or can you be lonely in a crowd? Unless one has told us that he's created us as nations and tribes so that we may know one another. And essentially, the vast majority of human beings are social creatures to some degree, some uh, to a greater degree than others. Of course, we have people who are naturally introverted, introverted and people who are neurodiverse, but it doesn't mean that they don't feel the pain of loneliness um, and that we are meant to function as communities and these communities have been decimated by lockdown, by, by sickness of COVID and by modern living where family infrastructure is broken down, um, communities are broken down where, you know, your social interactions perhaps at work and the quality of that interaction is not as good as within a neighbourhood. So what exactly is loneliness? So you can be lonely in a crowd and you might not be lonely on your own. It is sub the subjective emotion and pain experienced by one who perceives the absence of and longing for rewarding company social relationships. Basically, it means that um, if you perceive that you're lonely and you feel that pain, that is when you are suffering with loneliness. It is not necessarily the act of being alone. So, for example, if you go to get together, you may not necessarily experience loneliness because you're not feeling that pain, yet you are alone with Allah's Pandala, inshallah, mm -hmm. with uh, intimate, in intimate discourse with, with the Lord. Um, according to the BBC Loneliness Survey in 2019, loneliness has various manifestations uh, in a very practical and easy to understand way. It may be uh, a feeling of having nobody to talk to, feeling disconnected from the world, feeling left out, uh, a feeling of sadness and not feeling understood. And I'm sure these are feelings that many of us can relate to at some time or another. You know, in a busy social gathering, but actually you're sitting there without anyone to talk to or left out on the topic of a conversation. Or you feel that your friends don't have enough time to speak to you or your family members are busy or you just feel that you know you don't belong where you belong and these are common feelings by the way and they're harmful 
So the Royal College of Nursing has noted that um, loneliness is as harmful as the impact of obesity was making 15 cigarettes a day. So what does that really mean? Well, we know that um, obesity above a certain level or smoking at 15 cigarettes a day or more has a significant um, adverse impact on our health in terms of reducing life expectancy and increasing the risk of disability. It's associated with cognitive decline, meaning a disease such as Alzheimer's, dementia, Parkinson's, uh, memory loss. It's a significant risk factor for anxiety and depression. Um, there's an increased risk of disability, as we've discussed. There's also a stigma of accepting that you're, or, uh, you know, acknowledging that you might be feeling lonely. Um, it basically makes you look like you're not in, that there's something wrong with you. It's very easy to personalise the feeling of loneliness um, and to internalise it and see it as something lacking in your own social skills or your own uh, personality, your own behaviour or something wrong with you, which is not necessarily the case. Um, it can also damage our confidence and ability to build healthy relationships. And many people will probably be coming out of COVID and lockdown thinking, how do I hold social connections and relationships again? How do I entertain? How do I hold a healthy conversation? Um, and coming back to the BBC loneliness experiment in 2019, so remembering that this is pre-COVID, and um, it's very interesting to see this is a UK-based study in which uh, 30 to 40% of people reported feeling lonely very often in the UK and most you know and a good number of people felt uh, lonely some of the time. It's also interesting that the younger people are more likely to report loneliness whether this is an absolute feeling of loneliness or that they're more um, willing to share this or acknowledge this or perhaps they are the internet generation it's, it's hard to know but 40% of 16 to 24 year olds reported feeling very lonely compared with 26% of over 75s, who we would expect are probably lonely in the sense of having fewer people around them, having lost family, friends, you know, spouses, yet uh, they're less likely to report. So there's something very interesting in this data. So what are the spiritual antidotes to loneliness? Well, these have traditionally been family, community and congregation, and we are going to probably have to address these in a new way, inshallah, until Allah Subhanahu wa lifts this pandemic from us. Um, so, you know, we've been encouraged to pray in Jama'ah, in congregation, that Tarawih has historically taken place in a masjid, uh, while Qiyam al-Layl is the salah that we offer at home. Um, the iftar meal, where we come together, we share a meal, we feed other people, and we're told not to create a circles of wealth, but rather to make our, our wealth circulate in the community. Um, to visit the masajid, particularly for congregational salah and Jum'ah prayer, Hajj and Umrah, and many, many other examples. In fact, there are so many that I, I couldn't list the, the hadith here. Um, we have the extended family system where everybody has a place within the family, whether that's in inheritance or whether that's in the order in which we extend our closeness to them. Um, there are the rights of your neighbours. You know, the Prophet says was once concerned that your, your neighbour was had so many rights upon him that he would end up inheriting. And the rights of our community, the, the Fard al kifaya you know, communal obligations, where you can't have a communal obligation unless you have a community. Um, in the Fatiha, we make du'a to Allah subhanahu wa to guide us collectively and that we seek help from him collectively. It's never on a one-to-one, -one, really, when we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, many du'as are Rabbana, O oh Allah, O oh our Lord. Um, and just some hadith here that uh, from narrated uh, in the Musnad, Musnad of Imam Ahmed, that whoever does not show mercy to our young ones and acknowledge the rights of our elders is not one of us. Um, and this this uh, verse in Surah Nisa, Allah Subhanahu wa says, uh, worship Allah alone and associate none with him. Be kind to parents, relatives, orphans, the poor, the near and distant neighbours, your close friends, sneezy travellers, and those bonds people in your possession. Surely Allah does not like whoever is arrogant and boastful. This is an amazing verse. It basically sums up the entirety of my talk um, and the entirety almost of how, you know, we should uh, give hukukul ibad, the rights of other people, the rights of the servants and creatures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There's a pecking order here. And it's important to pay attention to this. So uh, first and foremost, our parents, then our kinsfolk, 
um, you know, those most vulnerable in society, the orphans, the poor, our neighbours near and far, our friends, people who are vulnerable because they're travellers and people over whom we have rights, perhaps our servants, our, our helpers, our cleaners, our employees, everybody has a right on us. Um, and if we were to simply refocus and recenter, we would uh, send out ripples of goodness through the community and through society. We were all to take care of those who are in our immediate circle. It's also important to note that Prophet uh, narrated from Abdullah ibn Umar, uh, sorry, from Abdullah ibn Umar in uh, narrating Ibn Majah. Uh, ibn Majah, the believer who mixes with the people and endures their annoyances is better than one who does not mix with them at all and does not endure, endure their annoyances. So there's something about dealing with the harm that people put in our way, and that comes alongside the rewarding relationships. And, uh, you know, I was just discussing with my children the other day that the reason Allah SWT keeps mentioning relationships in the Quran is because we're not meant to be solitary beings. They're not meant to go and hide at the top of a mountain or in the desert. It might be beneficial for a period of time. We need to disconnect from dunya, but it's not meant to be the longer term path. And in fact, you know, it's like this double-edged sword that once one, uh, someone once describes that when we interact with people, we are, inshallah, refining our character. And with that comes the pain of the other side of the sword, which is the, the hardships of the interaction and the challenges. Um, and before I go on to this, I just had a couple more hadith to remind us, actually, because it is so beautiful. Um, that in uh, Al Adab al Mufrad of Imam al Bukhari, um, the Prophet has uh, been reported to have said, Anyone who wants to have his provision expanded and his term of life prolonged should maintain ties of kinship. I just find this is such an amazing hadith because if we went look back earlier and we're comparing loneliness to smoking and to obesity, well, we know there are definite health hazards. Um, but here we're being told that actually by connecting our blood ties, we're improving our quality of life and our lifespan according to Allah's Panthar's will. So it's 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 uh, it's absolutely amazing that these simple things, and they it's because loneliness is a stressor. It is it produces stress hormones and it makes us sick mentally and physically. So um, how can we manage? How can we manage this? Um, so there are some strategies I've put down on this slide. Um, firstly, looking at self-management, what can we do on our own that doesn't really require a community approach? The first thing might be asking ourselves, do we feel lonely? Why do we feel lonely? When do we feel lonely? What has worked in the past when we felt lonely? So identifying those strategies that work for us. Has it been picking up the phone? Has it been visiting? somebody um, that you could visit in your bubble? Has it been, um, you know, doing something for charity? What, what has taken away that feeling, that pain of loneliness from you? Um, having compassion towards others. So when people are angry, upset or miserable, um, it may not be that they're directing their anger towards us, or they may be uh, unknowingly or subconsciously doing this, but recognizing that they may just be having a hard time and not taking their attitude personally allows us to be compassionate towards them, allows us to help us relieve their burdens and reach out to them um, and build up our own resilience towards feeling that the discomfort when other people are not in a good place. Having self-compassion, so looking after ourselves, having self-care and valuing uh, this life and the body and the health that Allah Subhanahu has given us, so taking time to pay attention to that. Um, and then pro-social behaviour, so other people may also be feeling very nervous in this pandemic in terms of reaching out um, and engaging. We're all probably a bit cocooned and functioning in a not very human-like fashion, <laughs> but reaching out to our spouses, our social networks, growing our social networks is still very, very doable. It may not take the same format as in regular you know, social intercourse that we may have had, but the internet has opened up channels for us to meet people from all over the world. And many of you who will be listening to this video, I may not have ever met, but inshallah, you know, we may be part of a larger community through the bridge or through other means. Having a daily routine, so having purpose to your life, having a routine, having something beyond yourself, 
um, is very, very important. And knowing when you're going to meet that personal need of yourself, that need that made you, makes you tick, gives you that life purpose and creating time for it on a daily basis. Other things that can help dissipate the pain will include meditation, yoga and Tai Chi. And of course, ultimately, the most important thing is our spiritual connectivity with Alas Pandala. But by design, he's created us to be social creatures. He's even created the birds, the bees, the insects and colonies and flocks. And that's why we have collective nouns. So it doesn't take away, but it helps us to manage that pain and helps us to strengthen our connection with Alas Pandala. Um, and then you've got things um, that you would get from being with other people. So we make Masafa, how we, we shake hands or we embrace we're actually releasing oxytocin through oxytocin, the love hormone, the connection hormone that helps us feel emotionally regulated and secure. And that's something that we may be missing. So lots of extra hugs for kiddies and spouses and people that you're allowed to hug in your bubble, um, obviously within the Islamic parameters, cuddles, tactile contact, and those things are all very um, replenishing. And for some people, weighted blankets are quite useful. It's just having that deep pressure therapy, um, which gives you the feeling of embrace. It can, has been shown to help manage stress and help manage anxiety. Um, and some people may find that, that helpful. Um, and then looking at a community approach. So we've already spoken a bit about the ripple effect. So the first people to prioritize will always be, you know, once we put ourselves in the right place, the right place would be your parents because we cannot repay their debt and what they've done for us. Um, so parents, family, I've left that a comma, sorry, friends. Um, and whether that's by WhatsApp, by phone, and by Zoom, you'll find that many people are probably not reaching out, so be the first one. And remind yourself of the hadith that the person who says salam first gets the 99 rewards. So inshallah, just reach out, pick up the phone um, and speak to someone. Um, remember to share food and presents and uh, with your neighbours, just ask how they're doing. Um, it's really important that you start to build those neighbors those connections and alhamdulillah that's one thing really positive that's come out of this lockdown um that we've really you know started going out for walks with neighbors they're not muslims but it helps create this feeling of community helps normalize muslims um and build a neighborhood um you know which is really important um you know turn your salat turn your home into a mini masjid uh, have a masala have a place for prayer make it congregational, get your children to the iqama if possible, um, and make it the cornerstone of your family routine. Family, structured family time is structured, non-chore based quality family, family time is very important. So whether you build in time for uh, play with your family um, or time to watch something relaxing or time to do, uh, you know, to go out together, um, having family meals uh, is at least once a day has been shown to significantly improve the mental health of children. And it, it's very, very grounding. You sit down, I mean, food is our essential social connection, really. And before the era of snacking and eating on the go, it would be a time where, you know, you wouldn't eat on your own, you would eat with other people. Um, and I'm currently doing some therapy with a, a lady who lives by herself. Um, and we've, you know, we're doing some work around obesity and she's recognised that when she sits with others and she's eating outdoors, actually she feels satiated a lot quicker. Um, and there's this, that's what we would call baraka in our terms. Um, giving charity, especially if there are needy people that you know, there are many people, many refugees, many asylum seekers, many needy people right on our doorsteps within our communities. Seek them out, go and help them. And you don't have to ask them. It's quite obvious that they will be, they may well be in a regardable situation. Um, but even beyond that, give them a gift and remember to make that well circulate. And it has a very different feeling to just giving online. And remember, you can also give up your time, your skills. All of this is gratitude back to Las Pandala. Um, picnic iftars, so maintaining the household rules because they won't change until the 17th of May again. Um, but, you know, you can have one family outdoors in your garden or in the park, inshallah. And perhaps, you know, if it's appropriate, perhaps you could do a mother prayer out there as well. Um, have some plans for after lockdown, inshallah, and inshallah for after COVID. That's been associated with good long-term um, health. Um, and remember, you can keep building a community online. 
So while we're not able to meet indoors in spaces, we can keep up the good work. So inshallah, don't lose heart or lose hope. Most people have transitioned to an online platform, which will be able to go back face to face, inshallah. But remember, find that common goal or that purpose that you know that Allah Subhanahu has given you. Search deep inside yourself, identify it, find like-minded people and work towards that goal. And you can keep building these projects, inshallah, until you know we come out of lockdown and you have something massive to do, something amazing that will be life changing and will make a difference to the world. And remember to send a gift to people. Sometimes you don't even tell need to tell them that you've sent a gift, or send them an iftar meal. And inshallah, you know that uh, the reward is not just with Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, in the sense that you know you will get. Um, that reward for breaking their fast or for spreading love but actually you get a direct hit of dopamine a, a positive feeling inside yourself and lastly my last tip is that we make the art unless one that lives this pandemic and to help us uh, keep our family ties and build good connections and protect our character okay so i hope that was helpful inshallah and i wish us all excellent physical mental and spiritual health